What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video we're continuing our series on SketchUp extensions for architecture by checking out an extension from TomTom Tom that helps you fix edge gaps and do other things with edges inside of SketchUp. So links to this extension and to the other extensions in this list can be found in my architecture extensions guide. You can check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash architecture architecture extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So Edge Tools is a free extension from TomTom Tom that's designed to help you work with different edges inside of your models. So while it contains a number of different tools for different things having to do with edges, the ones that I use the most often are the tools for finding gaps and closing them inside of your files, which I use a lot for optimizing imported files like CAD files. It has a number of other tools as well, but that's why it fits on an architecture extension list. So let's take a run through the different tools contained inside this extension. So the first one is a tool designed to split faces into multiple different pieces. So what this tool does is this will take a face like this one and it'll let you take one of the perimeter edges and split the face based on that edge. So you can see how the edge that gets brought in here is parallel to the edge that you're using to split this. So you can use this to split up your different faces really quickly. And so one of the areas where this gets a little bit interesting is what this will do is this will actually split faces on either side of a hole in an object. So like for example if I was to delete, whoops, if I was to delete this central face out, this would split edges around the outside of that. So you can see how I can use this to split an object with an edge on either side of an opening. So this allows you to do some pretty interesting things having to do with that. And the only limiting factor here is that the edge that you use has to be uninterrupted. So for example, if I was to erase all of this back out, I can use this edge to split this face like this, but then if I come in here and try to use this edge to do the same thing, you can see how that won't work. However, if this edge was uninterrupted on the top, so if I undo this so that this is an uninterrupted edge, now I can use this to split this face. So this allows for some interesting options in splitting your objects up if you need to do that. So the second tool is the one I use the most often and um, basically what it does is it'll inspect your selected object and it'll show you the different edge gaps contained inside of that object and it'll also give you an option to fix those gaps. So for example, you can see how this gives me a number of different circles in here where this is finding different gaps inside of this CAD file that I've imported. And and so you can see how like down here, for example, um, I've got basically a gap between this edge and this edge that have been highlighted. And when I mouse over them, they turn red. So when they turn red, I can click on this and I can use this to close in the gap. Now you do need to be a little bit careful here um, because it, it'll sometimes find things that aren't necessarily gaps. So like for example, right here, um, on the end of these contours, this is giving me an option to close this gap by clicking here. Well, I don't really want that because that's not actually a gap. So generally speaking, I like to use the manual way of doing this to find the gaps and close them myself. So one thing about this is you can also dictate the distance um, that it'll look for solutions. So you can see how down in the lower right hand corner right now this is looking for solutions to close the edge gap that are six inches or less. And so if I was to measure this gap right here, you can see how it's a gap of four inches. So it's finding that as a solution in here. However, you can tell it to search for bigger solutions. So if I type in a value of like 10 feet, um, you can see on now this is gonna search for solutions inside of a 10 foot radius as opposed to inside of that six inch radius. But you have to be careful with that because now sometimes it may find some undesirable solutions to close in gaps. So you need to kind of manage this process using the distance tool in order to make sure that your gap closing um, is finding the right solutions. And so there's also another tool in here, the second tool, that's gonna close all edge gaps. And so what you can do is you can tell this to go look for any solution inside of a six inch radius. And you can also tell it to re remove small edges or not and then click OK. And so what that would do is this would come in here and this would close all of the edge gaps that it finds within a radius of six inches. So you can see how all of those smaller gaps that were in here got closed. The problem with this and the thing you need to be a little bit careful about 
and it looks like we're good over here but sometimes this will come in here and this will close in things like these edges over here which you don't necessarily want so you can use this to come in here and close all of your edge gaps at once um, but you just need to pay attention and make sure that any additional stuff that gets created in here you erase out so that you're not creating edges that you don't need inside of your object and so another example over here is we've got a number of different gaps and so these are within a 24 inch radius so if I was to select this and type in a value of 24 inches and hit OK this would come in here and this would close all of those in but you can see how again what that did is that found all of the edges in here um, on the side that you don't necessarily want it to find so you can use this to close in all of those gaps at once but you just need to be aware that uh, you may get some kind of weird results and it may be better to just do that manually so the next tool is designed for erasing stray curves and really what this seems to do um, best as I can tell this seems to find all of the curves outside of a closed object so like if I was to select this and turn on erase stray curves what this does is finds all the extra edges that are hanging off the end of this that aren't closed in however you need to be careful with this because like for example if I try to use this tool on my CAD file it's basically going to erase out anything that isn't a closed curve um, in here so it erases out the whole thing so it can be a really useful tool to kind of strip out some of that extra stuff that's in here but you do need to be aware of what it might do and just kind of be careful when using this tool so the next tool the simplify selected curves this is a great tool if you get a giant CAD file or something like that that just has a ton of different curves in here so um, those can uh, really have a whole bunch of edges is contained in there like for example this is made up of three curves with 150 edges each so I end up with 450 edges well if you had a whole file of edges like that um, that would get really big really fast what you can do is you can select can select your curve and then you can click on the button for simplify selected curves and you could give it a max deviation and what this is going to do is this is going to reduce the number of um, edges or curves inside of the curve that you have selected so you can see how what that did is that came in here and this simplified this shape well now if I select on it this has something like 20 segments total as opposed to the 450 and so you can either type in a higher value with this one in order to simplify this more or you could type in a lower value like one and you can see how this only reduced my number of curves by 374 so I've got 76 segments in here or if you want to maintain some curviness of the curve with the edges in here you can set that to a smaller value or if you really want to reduce your file size and edge count you can set that to a higher value and then this last set of tools is an interesting set of tools to me basically what it does is it takes all your vertices and it makes them collinear so I, I best as I can tell what this one does is it takes all of those and it puts them in a straight line so like for example if I was to select a number of different curves in here and I was to select this first option what it's gonna do is it's gonna pinch all of those curves together and it's gonna make them into a straight line so you can either set this where the X Y and Z um, factor of these are all the same or you could do the same thing but like for example if you just wanted these to be collinear on like the x-axis you can see how what I would do is I would just select these and it took all of these and it basically lined them up um, along the x value of these lines so it took them all and it made the x value the same even though it left the y and z values so the one thing I haven't really figured out on this one is I'm not sure how those are set so if I do the same thing with the y-axis you can see how this takes these and um, puts them in the same line again but I'm not sure how the y-axis for all of these edges was defined and then if you do the same thing with the z-axis it kind of takes all of these and makes them coplanar but it doesn't necessarily make them flat so if I was to select this and select a uh, collinear on the z-axis you can see how this kind of flattens them out so that they all have a similar z value but it doesn't make them flat so I'm not sure exactly how it's calculating what exactly the z-axis is for these items but you can see how it can create some kind of interesting results if you're trying to create like slope faces or things like that um, I think TomTom Tom has a better version of this inside of vertex tools that's good for making these co these uh, vertices 
is flat. So that's something to check out as well within that extension. But you can see how you can kind of play around with this in order to make things uh, collinear, in order to do some interesting things with your edges. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you used edge tools before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.